So we're gonna be doing something slightly different for Chatfish 3.0. This time, you'll have 15 rules up from 10 in Chatfish 2, but this time you'll get to say whether you want it to be scored weighted in the early game, middle game, or end game. We'll have five rules for each, and I'll explain that in just a second what that means. You will have 90 minutes to suggest, or up to 30 total suggestions, so you can say no to half of the suggestions, or more if you don't want 15 total rules. This is how the rules are gonna be weighted based on the early, middle, and end game. If you say you want your rule to be early game, it will scale linearly from 32 pieces down to zero pieces. So the fewer pieces you have, the less that score weighs on the total evaluation. Middle game, it's similar, but weighted towards 20 pieces. So it'll have a bit of impact in the early game, 25% up to a full 100% when they're 20 pieces, back down to 25% with five pieces. And then end game, it goes very heavily close to five pieces, which I figured was a nice, like, obviously you can't have zero pieces, you can't have two either. So if there are 19 pieces, that's when it starts to have any weight. So scales from 20 down to 5, where it has a full 100% weight. And that's basically what Chatfish 3 is going to be. So from there, it's basically going to be the same suggestion process. But in your suggestions, you'll have to say early game, comma, and then the rule or whatever. So yeah, let's just get right into it. So do you want this to be an early, middle, or end game rule? Early game. Okay, so, so the rule is plus 0.5 points if you have two pawns in the middle for the early game. Keep in mind, you only have five of each that you can add. Okay, it looks like a yes. Minus 0.5 for a pawn being on its starting rank in the middle game. You think it would be better for the end game? Somebody else could suggest that then. Looking like a no. Okay, well, it has to be more specific than that, Enderbean. Okay, so plus 0.5 early game, plus 0.5 if there's a knight on F3. Don't know if you want to use one of your five early game rules for this. All right, it's a very, very clear no. Okay, minus 0.1 for every undefended piece in the middle game. We usually have a rule like this. Let's go ahead and vote on it. All right, looks like a pretty solid yes. Sounds good. Yeah, so default rules are material value and it'll always play checkmate. Okay, switch from plus 10 for checkmate to plus 10 for on Passat. And when will this be? Early, middle, or end game? Middle game. Okay, it's up to you guys whether you want a troll rule in here or not. Okay, no on Passat. Plus the average distance between the king and every pawn in the end game. Wait, what do you mean by that? So you want the king to be away from the pawns? Okay, let's do minus. Cause it seems like what you wanted was the opposite. Looks like it's still potentially a no. All right, that's a no. So I'm assuming this is plus 0.05 for every empty square that you can move to. Okay, but it looks like a yes to the middle game rule. So this is another middle game rule. So this would be the third out of five, and it is plus 0.1 for every square that is covered around the opponent's king. This is the closest one so far. Ooh, 50-50 on the dot. This is about all we're gonna get. I'm gonna call it there. It's a very close no. So plus one for having opposition when you are touching your pawns in the end game. Pull is up. I believe this is suggestion nine, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, looks like it's not gonna change. That's a yes. That's your first end game rule. Plus 0.1 if a piece is not on its starting square early game. By piece, do you mean non-pawn or does that include pawns? Because I know that's a um, point of contention. All pieces, including pawns. Okay, pulls up. This does include the king. Yeah, secret bone cloud rule. You try to sneak it in there. Yeah, all right, that's a no. Minus 0.01 for the distance from the edge. So any of the four ends of the board. Yeah, this is also a hidden bone cloud rule. It's really close. Okay, it's slowly slipping into no. Wait, I think people are realizing the secret bone cloud. It's neck and neck. He said maybe except king. He did say that. Do we redo the poll with except for king? It what? Yeah, it is. A, it is a different rule. Okay, so it is dead tied. But let's do a new poll. So I have a feeling it's gonna switch quite a bit. Okay, and that is your third early game rule. Oh, hey, yeah, I, I knew I remembered your name, Luft guy. So if in the middle game, there is a Luft plus 0.2. So is Luft not being able to move your king or being able to move your king? Okay, so if in the middle game, there's an escape square for the king. So if the king can move off the back rank, if it can move off the back rank, not if it does. Here it is. Let's go ahead and vote on it. All right, we are adding it. Plus 1.5 if you can capture the queen in the middle game. I'd say be careful about this because uh, giving points for attacking discourages capturing, if that makes sense. So once you capture, you don't have the points for that. But to be fair, you will also get the material value 
of the queen, so generally it'll be fine, but we will vote on it. All right, looks like a no. Plus 0.3 for each rank upon goes, like forward, sure. What part of the game is this gonna be? End game, okay. I don't know if it's too high. So it's a maximum of 1.5 extra points for having up the board and Pronia queen is inherently plus eight. So it might, it might be fine. I think 0.1 worked pretty well with Jetfish and Mini. All right, looks like a yes. The king on d4 and e4 in the middle game, minus 0.3. Oh, d1 and e1 in the middle game. Okay, sure. So it discourages the king from being on the starting square. So, oh, okay, so it encourages castling, I guess. I think this will just be a bong cloud rule, but not, it would be like a middle game bong cloud. I think it'll just end up moving forward instead of instead of to the side. Okay, this is the clearest snow that we've seen. You guys are very anti bong cloud today. Plus 0.25 for every space your pieces control on the enemy's side during the middle game. So people are concerned about the value. Switching to no, kind of suddenly. Another super, super close one. All right, yeah, it looks like a no. Middle game plus 0.2 for doubled rooks. Pull those up. All right, that's a yes. Plus 0.25 for castling. We have to be more specific. So you could do if, um, maybe if both rooks are to the same side of the king or something like that, it depends. Okay, so yeah, we could, that would be like a hacky way of doing it. And you want uh, 1.5? Okay, that's a no. So we've had we have six, eight rules so far. So we're at just over half and we're at the halfway point with the suggestion cap. So we're on track. Plus one for every piece controlling the center four squares in the early game. Not sure exactly the like the intricacies of that. There's a lot of ambiguity there that I have to work through, but it looks like a yes. If we have more attackers on a square than the opponent has defenders on it. Okay, so if there's an opponent piece on the square and we have more attackers on the square than defenders, plus 15% of the value of the opponent's piece. And that is middle game, which would be the final middle game rule. All right, that looks like a yes. And that would mean that there are no more middle game rules that can be suggested. Plus 0.2 for a piece that is capturable without an attacker. And what part of the game is this gonna be in? End game, all right, okay. Looks like a yes. Okay, early game, minus one if king is not on the first rank. This is a specifically bong cloud prevention. Fair enough. It's close, looking like barely a yes. All right, I'm gonna call it there, I think. Plus one if the king is on e2 in the early game. You guys are using up a vote on this. Okay, that is a no. For every piece that defends another one, plus 0.3, and for every piece being attacked, minus 0.2 early game. So this encourages your own pieces to defend each other. Seems decent. This would be the final early game rule. All right, that looks like a yes. So that is it for early game rules. Now we have two end game rules left. Pass pawn supported by a rook or king is plus one. So the only problem with this is that so the more of these that you add, it'll still be fine, but there's a critical point where if you give a pawn too many points for being close to promotion, it will no longer want to promote. We're not at that point yet. So the pawn itself is one. So promoting is only plus eight because you're turning one into nine. And then even then, so you're making the actual active promotion less and less incentivized the closer it is to eight but it still would if it doesn't have anything better to do. All right, that's a no. Plus one for every square we control around the enemy's king. I think that was going to be Vivex. And that has to be an end game rule. So looking for, not necessarily checkmate, but just looking to attack the king, I suppose. It doesn't encourage stalemate because stalemate just evens the eval. Stalemate is already considered zero, so it'll know not to do that. So I wouldn't be worried about stalemate. All right, looks like a yes. All right, one rule left and it's an end game rule. So you guys have, I think, eight chances to get this and 12 minutes, but we might go past that plus 0.5 for attacking enemy pawns in the end game i don't know if we really need this one but we can try it does discourage capturing but usually if the points for attacking are less than the points for capturing or you know because the points for capturing are just the material value it usually is fine but it, the closer it gets to the actual material value the less likely it will be to capture okay this is a no plus 0.25 for every potential fork white can make i don't know about potential forks but we'd probably just have to do for every fork yeah that white can make it's inherently not symmetrical which i would be for i I'm, i've been doing these symmetrical but if it's specifically white then yeah i mean i guess i'd have to listen to that okay this one's a no i'm gonna keep it quick in the interest of time plus 0.25 for attacking minor pieces safely another rule that i don't know if does enough and yeah these are all end game rules at this point the last rule will be pulls up and you now have only six left i might just ignore the timer since we're kind of close to one, an hour 30 anyways with one rule left 
All right, this one's another no. Plus 0.1 for every, so if a piece is attacked, but also defended, plus 0.1. So it'll kind of encourage you to have pieces that are attacked and defended at the same time, which could end up being bad. Okay, that's another no. I don't think I even had that poll on screen. Minus 0.05 for the number of squares the king is away from the center. He says it encourages a central king, but doesn't outweigh the king helping the pawns. So it's up to minus 0.15 on the back rank. This seems pretty good. Keep in mind, you only have three other chances after this. If you vote no to this one, poll is up. Looking like yes so far, it's close. I'm gonna let this run for a little while. So having a central king, this is a very low weight, which kind of makes up for the fact that it's not always good to have it in the center. It'll just kind of nudge it towards the center. All right, looks like a yes. So that will round out the suggestion phase. So now we're going to get into the programming phase of the stream. Okay, so I mean, Trefish Mini got up to Lorenzo before losing, but I think we're gonna go back down to Sven and we're gonna work our way up from there. Let me get the timer off screen. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so let's do best of three. And Chatfish is going to start with the white pieces against Sven, which is the 1100 bot. This is where Chatfish 2 left off. Okay, so it plays... It's weird that it... So the early game eval should be incentivizing a double move. Because if it has two pawns in the center, it likes that. That's a little odd, but we shall see. Okay, knight to c3 next. I'm a bit concerned queen sure is this working properly i don't know king to the side queen to d7 yeah what's the king on the starting square rule did we add that okay it attacks the or it pins the queen it's not quite gonna work as a pin yep sure enough pawn pushes slides the bishop back not a great eval already for chatfish three <laughs> moves the rook over did we is that a rule that we ended up keeping on the starting square no. Very strange. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Maybe this is going to be worse than Chatfish 2. Captures. Sven captures. Capture the pawn with our queen. We are up a pawn, at the very least. Is the edge rule? Oh. Maybe. This looks dangerous. But now it's putting the queen on the center. It's offering a trade. Does not get taken. But we take the trade. <laughs> Too bad there aren't any castling rights. Is this going to be a waste of four hours? It's possible. Yeah, I don't know. We're going to find out. Our knight gets attacked. Keeping knight in the center is nice. So, yeah, the problem is... So, Travis 2 had relatively... Or no, Mini, rather, had relatively weak evaluation. So, it was basically just material value, but with a couple extra nudges. This one had a lot more, like, full, like, 0 0.1, 0 0.25 or whatever. Oh, we get a free pawn. And a fork. We'll see if... Oh, this, is the, this is the real test. This is, like, the real test. Is it going to take? Sure enough, it takes the free rook. The fort, uh, yeah, it's not too incentivized to fork. Moves the king back over. And just the, slides the rook up, making a random moves, basically. Doesn't take the pawn, interestingly. Usually these bots like to trade. Our pawn gets taken, and we take with a rook instead of pawn, which is a little bit strange. Not incentivized to take with a pawn, which gets extra eval for pushing. I'm very surprised that it's not trying hard enough to get the pawns to promote. Is he going to keep pushing? That's what I'd expect. No, it just captures. We're still up seven points of material, so I'm not worried at all about this game. But it's not necessarily a good sign. Some of the things that it's doing. And it just straight up, well, I guess it would be trading, kind of trading a pawn. It does take it, but another one of our pawns hangs. Or we get checked. Simply move out of the way. That doesn't seem... Oh, never mind. This is defended. What am I thinking? Knight on the rim? Sure. I don't know why it's not taking this pawn. Maybe it's seeing something better. Okay. Finds a fork. King down. And we are now up 10 points of material. This is good, but maybe not great. We'll see. You have a free move with a knight. Goes for the free pawn with discover check instead of trading the bishops. Good for chatfish. Takes the other free pawn is not really pushing these pawns like at all which is concerning i guess it's just finding better moves or what it thinks are better moves another free pawn that's a weird move from sven free rook yeah we'll see hopefully it does push more after it trades okay so that's out of the way keeps getting checked still great eval for white okay i think that's kind of yeah that's it for checks now 
attacking the bishop. I was expecting a move like this, which I guess probably wouldn't have been the best. King's up to attack. Instead of defending the rook, just slides out of the way. Now, uh, winning the knight. One piece left for Sven. Nice and easy start for Tratfish. We'll see if it does end up pushing more. I don't know. These pawns are not pushing very much at all. I guess, hold up. Oh, the, the pawn up is an endgame rule, which only starts to tick in with 20 pieces. It's at 12 now, so it's at about like about half uh, strength. So maybe it'll start pushing pawns now, now that it has some incentive, except now that it's winning material. Okay, I would imagine the pawn pushes are going to start soon, now that material value is less of a thing. It is making four, which Shafish will not necessarily see. You won't see it, might accidentally play it. Okay, still not quite pushing the pawns. This could be bad. We have the king stalemated, effectively. It can, oh no, it can only, yeah, it can literally only go to these two squares. So it's probably, okay, mate in two, it should see this now. Knight comes in, sure enough. There we go. Okay, takes on Sven, convincing, but also concerning that it wasn't pushing pawns very much. I don't know. But anyways, this is a best of three, so let's continue with Sven playing black. Oh, let me play the actual move on the board. There we go. All right, let's do the same thing with black. And we're gonna go up a few a few bots after this one. Ooh, okay. Scandy. Plays a check. Seems like a relatively normal opening. I don't know why it's not going for the two pawns in the center. I, I guess the other points that it gets for other stuff is more important. Okay, simply says out of the way. Not looking great on the eval, except for the fact that Sven just blunders a knight. We'll take that. Now potentially, okay, there's a fork. We don't really have to be worried about the fork though, because there's a queen defending. Oh, apparently that's a blunder. Not seeing why, neither does Sven. Well, yeah, no, there's a fork, but how is that? We can just defend it. Okay, Sven goes for a trade, we take. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at doing that, okay, man. Not sure what that move was all about. We're up three points of material. Now five. Ooh, Chaffish really thinking here, it looks like. Unless it broke, hopefully it didn't break. It did not, it was just thinking. Yeah, yeah, Chaffish won game one. So it just has to win this next game to move on. And it's looking, yeah, it's looking good, but I would say not good enough. It's better than Chaffish 2 based on this, but maybe not as good as Chaffish Mini. Yeah, I think it just likes trading in general. We haven't really, we haven't seen it down material, so I don't know if it's just trading because it's up. I like going for checks, even though we didn't program it to do that. Castles, fancy. I think it's better than Lemonfish. We could do that, Ender Bean, maybe at some point. Rook moves back down. Uh, Chaffish Mini got, uh, I think it beat Pablo, and that was the highest it got. You're talking about me personally, I haven't tried. Slowly, <laughs> slowly picking away at Sven here. See how long it takes for it to find mate. It currently has a mate in six, apparently. Gets a fancy fork, mate in eight now. Just takes the material, of course. Mate in three, it's getting really close. Whoa. Oh, it's a check, never mind. Now it should see it. It's a mate in two. Sure enough. Mate in one. Yeah, it's finding good moves. I think, well, it finds like checkmate super, super easily. All right. It has taken down the 1100 convincingly. Now, oh, it already made its first move, but we're gonna move on to the next bot. It's, it's consistent at least, it's making this E3 move. Oh, let's play the final move. What was it? This? Yeah. New bot. Let's uh, go beyond Wilson. Let's do a 1300. Vin, Nelson, or Jade? I'll let you guys pick. We're going to do a 1300, then a 1500, if it beats the 1300. I'm looking like Nelson. Okay, no point in continuing this any further. Clearly, Nelson. Let's go ahead and end the poll. And we start as white. Let's see. Does Nelson go for early queen aggression? Looks like it. Based well, I guess it's only E5, but... Ooh, okay. Putting a pawn in the center. Yep. Let's see how it reacts. I mean, it's already defended against... Yeah, it can't get Scholars mated, which is nice. And it also probably won't lose material very easily, but we'll see. Uh-oh. <laughs> Still going for it. Kinda. Blocked with pawn, sure. I think we've successfully, successfully fended off the queen aggression. In fact, Nelson's already given up his queen. That's like his entire strategy gone. We got a good old Connect 4. Takes another trade, sure. Yeah, Chaffish is doing the, a consistent opening, which I think is a good thing. That means it's not probably not tied unless it just randomly picked the same move twice. Apparently, B3 is the best move. Oh, <laughs> I don't know about that one. 
Mouse slipped. This is a depth four. Pawn trade. Castling would have been nice for sure. Doesn't do it. And we're up a pawn still, I think. Oh, apparently that swings it way into our favor. He's having a much easier time. Oh, because we went a rook, duh. A much easier time against Nelson than we were against Sven, which is odd. Oh, maybe going after this bishop. That'll be fun. Nelson's not having a good time here. King in the middle, double pawns on the edge. Yeah, we finally made a chess spot that takes the rook. Uh, we don't know what that's made at ELO is. We know that's probably higher than 1300, at least compared to these bots. When's Lemonfish 2.0? Eventually. I'm sure it'll come back soon. This bot? The only bot that hasn't beaten Martin is Trafish 1. Well, it actually has beaten Martin, but not consistently. Uh-oh. Trafish is slowly losing its lead. It's still doing fine. Okay, it <laughs> gets out of this discovered attack. Oh, hopefully it doesn't... Okay, no, no repetition, which is nice. Uh-oh. Apparently, Nelson had something there. Oh, you'll have to go back a bit if you want to see the rules. Check. Okay. Wait, are we winning material here? I'm not seeing exactly how, but we have this check. Uh, Chess.com bots have... They, they do repeat, I think. I think we've had that before. Unless I'm mistaken. Maybe I am mistaken. Oh, okay. Nelson making mistakes again. That's what we like to see. Oh, there's a fork. Why is it not playing this fork? Oh, is it in check? Or am I dumb? No, wait. The eval. What's happening? I'm afraid. Oh, no. Okay, wait. We're good. We're good. If it finds it. There should be a fork, right? Yeah, so it takes and then bishop takes and we have a fork. I think we're good. Yes. Okay, we survived. That was scary for a second. Phew. The eval bar was just wrong. Chefish is better. Yeah, probably. Quite cringe. I'll have to think of something to do for that. I've been wanting to do more variety in the streams. Okay, we're chilling. You get the bishop. Everything's okay. There's one pawn left. Mate in eight. Mate in two is the magic number. And, oh, we don't even go for the... Oh, we double up our rooks. Okay, okay. More important than the free pawn. I think it... Isn't it literally more important? Okay, now it finally takes. All right, see ya. Probably not, Elza. We'll see. Is it finding it? Where is it? Mate in three. Hasn't found it yet. Still mate in three. Has to get... One closer. Hopefully it doesn't repeat. Pushing a pawn. It is defended. Is it going to finally promote? I think it is. Yep. And mate in two. We should... Okay, should hopefully find it. Check and mate. There we go. Okay. Now we have to see how it does against Nelson as black. So let's see how it does against the queen aggression here. We might have to go up even more. More. We know Travis 3 likes the Scandi. And this time it's not defending against mate but it should maybe be fine takes the pawn what's going on here it's not even going for the scholars mate not that it would even really be possible anymore very strange it, it's just being aggressive with the queen but what was the last end, end game rule let me what the number of is away from the center i think at a distance from center times i can check it wouldn't have much impact anyways but it might be other rules getting in the way okay back to the game well the the point values are kind of low anyways so that could be why i'll check while the game's being played you know it's it's, it's correct yeah the values are just kind of low okay we pin our queen to the bishop kinda let's see if we end up taking it okay trading down also a queen trade potentially coming out no interesting both players keeping the queens on the board never mind nelson does not want that Finally taking the center. It always takes it a while for some reason. And it's pushing pawns. That's what we like to see. Just up one point of material, though. I think it might struggle against 1500. We'll have to see. Hello, Burn. Also, hello, Ifan. Trading down. It's going into the, uh, well, end-ish game. Up a full pawn, but not making a whole lot of progress. Again, doesn't castle. Prefers to keep the king towards the center, which might be... This is, okay, this might be the thing. So it, or I guess it's not moving away from the center. I don't know why it moves here instead. Because it's still the same distance from the center. But it wouldn't want to castle because it moves it farther away from the center. Like during the, like, non-late game. We don't trade. Instead of defending our bishop. Yeah, neither player has moved their rooks by the looks of it. Nelson not trading. I have not played against these bots, actually. Maybe I should. That might be a thing that I should do for a stream. Okay, this is starting to look... Good, according to the eval bar, apparently this wasn't the move, but it's fine. 
Now we're doing good. We should have a free knight, maybe, with a discovered check. Yep, sure enough. Yeah, it's pre-moving, basically. Oh, mate in one. We, we got there. I wasn't even paying attention. Wow, what a mate. That's fancy. Look at that. The double knight rook check mate. No, Hikaru would absolutely destroy it. Okay, so we beat the 1300, and we will move on to a 1500, so pass into the advanced category. We have Wendy, Antonio, and Pierre pulls up. Looking like Wendy, but it's close between Wendy and Antonio. Is Antonio really difficult? Plays balanced, apparently. Oh, Wendy will throw pieces into the fire of her attack. I think that, yeah, you guys might be onto something voting for Wendy. Interesting. I would kind of want to see it against Antonio, but looks like Wendy it is. All right, now it's against the 1500 Wendy, who apparently plays really aggressive. We're playing the white pieces first. Ooh, yeah, she does play really aggressive, especially if the queen takes the pawn. Okay, it doesn't. Yeah, it's already up a pawn. So this might be much easier for Chatfish than I was expecting it to be. Oh, wait, never mind, it's not losing a... No, that, that is totally losing a pawn, right? Doesn't get taken, but I think it was. Okay, now Chatfish takes. Looks like one of my games. Trades down, still up a clean pawn. And this, okay, now it's going for some queen aggression. This is a fork, which I mean, hey, that's not the move. Takes the pawn with check, wins a rook, I believe. Yikes, Wendy struggling. Is that? Oh, it's not checkmate, but you can. F oh, no, mind, you can't. What am I thinking? Okay, goes for this check. Ooh, a quiet move. Love to see that. Might be going after this bishop, which would make it easier to attack. It's thinking. It doesn't go after the bishop. That's a weird move. I have no idea why I played that. Maybe the queen was close to getting trapped? Not trapped. It's so out in the open. There's no way. This is a. <laughs> Shavish City really likes this. these rook moves. It's very strange. Oh, wait. Hold on. Wins another... No, it doesn't win the rook because it's the bishop right there. But for some reason, it's okay to keep... I'm a little bit confused why it's okay with this. Is it going to repeat? I think it's repeating. But maybe Wendy isn't? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. We're good. We're good. Don't worry. It didn't... It was, I guess it wasn't good enough for it to... Or a bad enough position for it to repeat. Okay, it looks like it's probably going to clean up these pieces. It's up seven points of material, so I'm not worried at all. Maybe we should just not do the best of threes until... It starts to struggle. Ooh, we have a castle. I don't know if it was... I mean, it's fine. Kind of a weird one. Not that the king was safe in the center anyways, but... Oh, and it has luffed. I guess uh, I already kind of had that. Ooh, picking up some pawns. Plus eight now. And attacking a rook. Oh, I guess it's a trade. Never mind. It's still not finding much... Like, it's not making too much progress. It does have this interesting fork idea where it could trade material, but not going for that. Oh, never mind. The bishop's pinned. Not anymore. Ooh, now it's going for a trade where it can end up with a check, which would... So if uh, takes takes, it would be defending the pawn, but that's not what we see. We don't go for a trade. Instead, this check, which looks interesting. Not what Stockfish would have done, it looks like, but I guess it's fine. Ooh, takes the knight instead of the bishop. Bishop simply slides back. This pawn's pinned. Important thing to know. But we lose a pawn in the process. Yeah, chat is kind of a bit distracted. Yeah, it's not going for many attacks. It's just, I mean, I guess it kind of had to defend there, but I don't know. It's not progressing to the next stage of evaluation very fast because of because it's not like really trading anything. Uh-oh. This, uh, yeah, hold on. Okay, no, we're good. No repetition here. But that does lose another pawn, I think. Uh-oh. Lead slipping. We have our doubled rooks. Classic. Yeah, slow positional squeeze. We have a GM in the house. We a pawn. Okay, we get it back. Not a big deal. But we lose it right back. Oh, we don't lose it right back. Chaffish was instant with that. That's what I get for not paying attention to the position. That's, uh, yeah. Holy. Double, doubling up the rooks again, of course. Just gonna bleed it out. Oh, the thing about it, liking doubled rooks so much is it won't find ladder mates. Oh, please don't repeat. Just take the pawn. Okay. Pawn gets taken. Okay, yeah, we won't do it. We won't do a second game against Wendy. Whenever they're this not close, we'll probably do it like that. Okay, takes. Now let's see if it can overcome the tendency to double up rooks to find a checkmate. I'm not sure. King comes up. Okay, it does look like it's like maximizing its distance from the center, except it's not exactly. Very strange. It might still be influenced because it only it only ends up being yeah long opposition exactly. The not wanting it on. 
anything but the last drink is still having some effect. So maybe that's enough. Oh, oppos okay, opposition, but not. Oh, no. Well, yikes. It had mate in three as well. It just had to get, it just got, it had to get a little bit closer. It didn't want to undouble the rooks. That is, in fact, an oopsie. Yikes. I almost want to move on anyways, but I think we have to do a second game against Wendy. Yeah, okay. So we have to play another game against Wendy, unfortunately. We're going to we're gonna have to see a decisive win. Yeah, it loves playing this Gandy. That's the worst position so far, apparently. I mean, the code uh, is all... You can watch the stream for it, I suppose. <laughs> but I will I will be releasing a playable version of Chatfish at some point. Okay, that's a free pawn, it looks like. Not a free... Not anything else for free. Unless that's a... Interesting, our queen is kind of stuck. Maybe not trapped, but stuck. Never mind. We're doing fine. Oh, we're not doing fine. What's the move? Uh-oh. Is our queen getting trapped by Wendy? Looks fine. Found the best move, apparently. I'm a little bit worried. We're up a pawn, but down 2.8 on the eval. Yeah, there's some development issues here for sure. Yeah. This is not looking good. Oh, no. I mean, good for us. Dang. If Chaffish takes this, then I think we're kind of out of the woods. Oh, no, but there's a fork after if we trade. We do trade. Actually, it doesn't quite work like that. Yeah. So we're doing fine. Wendy, your opportunity. Yeah, we're kind of not not developing very much here. Still, whoa. I would say still better than two just on the virtue of the depth, but not by a ton. Yeah, material's now equal. We find a fork. Swung into our favor, which is nice. Yeah, maybe. King. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how you guys will be able to do that, but yeah, development is kind of a struggle here. That's a free... Wait, was there a reason not to move the knight for Wendy? That's weird. I don't think that would work, um, Prod, because it's at a depth, so you can't tell it what moves to make. You can only tell it what, what positions are good. Yeah, I think our only real central control rules were... Wait, hold on. Yeah, like each piece is distance from the center, but not by a whole... It was 0.01 for the total distance, or, you know, each distance. Yeah, I don't think the... The positional weight is very high. It's there, but it's not as high as some other rules. So I think it's kind of spoiled by those. But like, I mean, it's still it's still doing fine. Okay, finally takes a trade. Kinda. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's not playing very fast. Like, as far as, like, pace. Like, I don't know. It's not playing aggressive, I guess. Not making things happen. That's a good question, Marco. I'm not sure. Oh, no. Wait, why is this not bad? What am I missing? It's okay to give up the rook? Why? I'm missing something. The eval didn't change very much. Okay. Very strange. Okay, surely we'll trade now. Oh no. No, we should be fine. You missed the coding. Oh, did you miss the coding? Yeah. No, it can't do that. It only analyzes the positions statically. This It's just shuffling this king around. I'm not exactly sure what's causing it to do that. But this is not looking good. <laughs> we might have hit a wall against Wendy where it just doesn't know to do anything here. I don't know why it's not pushing. I mean, I guess uh, nine pieces on the board. It has most of its end game value. And it's pushing now. Now it's just kind of shuffling around again. This isn't good. Yeah, I have social anxiety. Exactly. This is concerning. Uh, oh no. Oh no. This bot does not know how to play end games. I don't know what's going on with the pawns. One more try. I guess it is a best of three. I'll have to. Okay, so if it doesn't win this game, it'll have to be the last game. Oh, I have to do it as white. So give it, we'll give it one more try as white. Ooh, that's a new one. Really bringing the knight in. Nice and early. And right back. Okay. I think Chatfish 3 is broken. Poking around a little bit. Oh, okay. Wait. I guarantee it's going to take the bishop. No. Okay. Now it takes the bishop. And the evaluation has shrunk. Yeah, it is playing perfect chess by that definition. Exactly. Yeah, three hour class before this. Jeez. Yeah, this uh, this version of Chaffish is a little bit bad. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. It's, it's it's trading. Okay. I mean, hey, fifteen hundred isn't horrible. That's better than me. I'll probably have to give it, uh give it a try playing against all of the Chaffishes for a video. If this, if this final game ends in a draw, I'm just going to have to assume that it always would. So I'm going to say it can't get past 1,500. Okay, wait, the evaluation's slipping back up. Never mind. It was. Yeah, you have to, do, you have to learn to code first. 
Okay, takes a trade. Apparently an accuracy. Wendy has the advantage now. A chess pot tournament? That could be a thing. I don't know. Are there, are there enough programmers in the chat for that? I like how we're just talking about other stuff instead of what Chatfish 3 is doing. It's not doing so hot. I can say that. I think uh, the main thing is that it doesn't value material enough. I guess the material is equal, so it doesn't, whatever, but it's not winning material because the other, the scoring for the other evaluations is too high. That it doesn't want to string stuff like that together, maybe. Oh, but if we do a tournament, like somebody would have to code the bots. I wouldn't code like 32 different bots for one stream. That would take a long time. Oh, okay. Slowly, okay, we're, we have a better evaluation now. <laughs> Never mind. It's still better, but Chaffish 3 is very slow. Yeah, like the other Chaffishes were at least exciting with how they were bad, but this one's just kind of, it's just kind of slowly not doing super well. It is up a full piece, so like it might move on. And the, the eval is just getting slowly better and better. Okay, it gets a pawn and it'll have a discovered attack, but the king stays. It does, wait, what is that move? doesn't go for the rook instead go for the free pawn i guess it's yeah this is the exchange thing is gonna win a free a knight sure okay hopefully chaffish can find checkmate here we might be moving on except a free pawn sure up nine points of material not pushing pawns at all which is a little bit strange oh actually i think the um it might be because they're defending each other i think the points for defending a piece are higher than the points for pushing a pawn let's really think about it whoa oh it's defended did not see that. I'm not sure about this move. I guess it's fine. Trade happens. Okay, surely it'll find checkmate from here. Ooh, fancy way to defend a bishop. Mate in seven. I think that's actually, that's probably most of why this bot is boring to watch is because it literally never pushes pawns. Oh no. All Wendy has to do is find a threefold loop that she'll fall into. Never mind, it just gives up its rook. Okay, now mate in two is the magic number. Surely it won't repeat. Oh, pawn push. Might finally see promotion? Nope, not yet. Mate in five. Mate in four. I'm assuming that's not the right move. Mate in 16. Yikes. Mate in six, okay. Mate in eight. Yeah, it kind of does, Savio. It's worth it though for Chatfish. There's interestingly a discovered check that we don't play. I also think points for checking is not something that we have this time. That might have been good. Oh no. Yeah, this chat. Yeah, the chefish does not really know how to win. Mate in five though is getting close. Mate in twenty. Never mind. Yikes! It lost force to mate. Oh, it has it back. In seven. Never mind. Mate in thirteen. Yeah, what went wrong here? Mate in eight. Okay, it's getting close. Never mind. Mate in nine. It's only got like forty more moves to do it. Ooh, the king came up again. That's rare. Now oh, right back down. Oh, I think it found the loop. Is it gonna go back? Well. <sighs> All right, this chatfish is a little bit broken. <laughs>